This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 617. Weight Loss, Strategies to Hold Yourself Accountable by Elizabeth Biskevic with dietspotlight.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your very own personal narrator. Welcome to a Tuesday edition of Optimal Health Daily. Remember, this is one of five podcasts where we read to you from blogs for free so that you don't have to read them yourself, except on Fridays. That's where I usually answer your questions. To check out one of our five other shows, just search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this. And I'm excited because I have a new blog that I'm gonna read from today, dietspotlight.com. They share unique insights and tools in your pursuit of weight loss, health, and wellness, which sounds like a perfect fit for this show. Oh, and in case you're wondering, I forgot to mention, well, first of all, I forgot to mention what I'm thankful for this year, and it actually hasn't changed much from last year, in that I'm thankful for you. Thank you for listening to this show. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing this with someone. I am just very grateful to you. And in case you're wondering whether I melted my turkey fryer this year, I did not. I learned my lesson. Sorry to disappoint. All right, I'm sure you're eager to hear from Elizabeth and dietspotlight.com. So let's get to today's post and start optimizing your life. Weight loss. Strategies to Hold Yourself Accountable by Elizabeth Biskevic with dietspotlight.com. The term lose weight is tossed around like it's an easy thing we can all just do. The problem is, it takes more than just talk to make it happen. It takes time, dedication, and of course, accountability. The first thing to remember that despite what many health bloggers might have you believe, losing weight is an equation. You need to, on average, burn more calories than you consume. That being said, there are ways to do this without drastically changing your lifestyle, eating habits, or routine. It just takes commitment. Quote, I do believe you have to be ready to make a change, and that can be the reason someone will have success in anything they do. I truly think being fully committed to whatever program you choose should be something you look at as a lifelong journey. Healthy eating is a true commitment, But those who do everything in moderation and take the time to focus on living a healthy life will be the ones who see long-lasting results. Jillian Spector, Certified Nutrition and Wellness Consultant, Personal Trainer, and Owner of The Fit Chick. Commitment number one, set actionable goals and write them down. Every Sunday, create a game plan for the week and then stick with it. For example, you might plan when and where you will work out, Schedule time to go for a walk after work or plan out healthy meals in advance. For Jillian Billard, a writer for Wanderlust Festival, there are several ways to hold yourself accountable for keeping your goals. Writing a letter can be a perfect first start. Quote, reminding ourselves of our positive intentions can be incredibly beneficial to sticking to your commitments. End quote. Looking for support systems, both online or in person, and developing your own through a consistent meditation practice, for example, are other ways. Helpful tip. If you have a smartphone, set calendar appointments, blocking out time for the gym, walking, and cooking. Use the alarm setting to notify you an hour or so before it's time, so you have plenty of time to eat a light snack, change your clothes, and get out the door. Commitment two. Start with a mini cleanse. Just to prove that you can. Saying no is empowering, and doing a month-long challenge to reset your brain can do wonders for your mind and body. Perhaps you give up alcohol for a month or give up chocolate for 30 days. Whatever your vice, jumpstart your goals by first proving your power. After all, it's only four weeks. Helpful tip. Find a month where mini cleanses are popular and get a friend to do it with you. Sober November is always a favorite because it sets your body up for the holidays and lowers your tolerance. Commitment number three. Set a workout routine. Workout, period. Even if you don't break a sweat every time, the act of putting on your workout clothes and shoes and getting out the door is the hardest part, and it's how you create new habits in your life. If it's in your budget, joining a gym and then creating a routine for your workout can be helpful for any weight loss goals. If gyms aren't your jam, try apps like ClassPass that let you sign up for group fitness classes in advance. Keep track of your success in your calendar and then take time at the end of each week to applaud yourself for sticking with it. If that won't work for you right now, there are plenty of free online programs and apps that can help you hit your fitness goals. Even if you don't feel it, 
Get there anyway. You may surprise yourself. Commitment number four, weigh yourself once a week. Seeing progress will help you maintain accountability. Weigh yourself every morning before you eat breakfast and record it in a journal. On weeks where you don't see a change, adjust your workout and dieting goals accordingly. When you do see the scale drop, don't forget to congratulate yourself. Commitment number five, take lots of photos. Even if it's just you in normal everyday clothes, track your progress over the weeks and notice where on your body you tend to lose and gain weight fastest. Use your pictures as a way to hold you accountable. If you see yourself gaining weight, which sometimes happens during the holidays, go back to that goal you set and regain your control. Commitment number six, utilize technology. There's an app for everything now. Use them. For tracking nutrition intake and weight loss, My Macros or My Fitness Pal offer easy to use calorie counting and let you track your weight loss. For working out and getting stronger, apps like Strength Fight act like a personal trainer, offering customized workout routines at a low price. Apps that offer home workouts like the Cody app can also be helpful on those days where it's hard to get to the gym. Commitment number seven, treat yourself. Set milestones for your progress and reward yourself accordingly, just not with food. We aren't animals. Food is not something we should use as a training tool. Instead, treat your senses with something you can feel, smell, wear, or see, like an at-home spa night, a massage, buying a new suit, watching your favorite Netflix show. You get the idea. Commitment number eight, partner with a friend. Have a gym friend or a buddy who's also serious about their weight loss goals. This will not only reinforce accountability, but it will make the journey more fun for you both. Besides, having a gym buddy is way better than going alone. And commitment number nine, stay positive. These things take time. Trust the process, enjoy your success, and don't give up. You just listened to the post titled, Weight Loss, Strategies to Hold Yourself Accountable by Elizabeth Biskevic with dietspotlight.com. You can find a lot more on their site, which is linked in this episode's description at oldpodcast.com. Dr. Neil again here. There's so many things that I love about these suggestions. Writing down goals, huge fan of that. Just by writing something down, we realize that the brain makes a different connection as opposed to just mentally saying, I'm going to go do this. Writing down a goal somehow makes it more real. It makes it more concrete and we start to believe it more. Setting a workout routine. I'm one of those who has to schedule workouts on my calendar, otherwise it won't happen. If we rely just on willpower, it's probably not gonna happen. And I love the idea of having gym clothes readily available so that when you're ready to go for that walk or jog or lift those weights, everything's right there for you. It's no longer a barrier. Oh, and if you do join a gym, try and pick one that's maybe on your way to work or school. If the gym is located on a road or on a highway that you hardly ever go down, you're not gonna go there. So try and pick one that's on the way to something that you frequent regularly. When it comes to weighing yourself, yes, absolutely, that can hold you accountable. But something else you can also notice is how your clothes are fitting, particularly around the waist and hips. If you notice that, hey, my pants are fitting a little looser, awesome. Even if the number on the scale hasn't changed or maybe it's even gone up a tick, That's okay as long as your clothes feel looser because that probably means you're gaining muscle. All right, that's enough out of me. Before I go, if you wanna hear more blogs being narrated to you for free, you can hear topics like personal development, personal finance, business, and relationships. You can do that by listening to all of our shows. Just search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this to find them. I thank you as always for listening. Thank you for being a subscriber. Have a great rest of your day. I'll be back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism, from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode. 
and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.